Hola, buen dia. As you can see, we do not have the cabinets up on the wall as planned. The walls are made of uh, hollow tijoles, as you can see, and they're heavy, but they're hollow. So we had to bust some holes in the wall and fill them with cement to give it the cupboards a better anchorage. So we're waiting for cement to cure. In the meantime, I did another pallet up cycle and created some shelving and a small countertop off to the side of our kitchen. We also share our small garlic harvest because they were the last of the garlic. Uh, we do some lemonade recipes and also watch a thunderstorm. Cool. She trapped me here. I'm stuck. You're stuck there. I need to Okay. Yep. This line here is where the lower edge of the upper cabinet should sit. And this line up here is where the lower edge of the 45 degree angle for the French cleat should sit. And this pencil line is where the side of the cabinet should sit, giving us half a centimeter clearance to the hot water tank. So what we did is, wherever the wood went, we took the French cleat, oh, right there. We, <laughs> we lined our French cleat up with the line here for the height and the line on the side for the placement. And then we marked all of the pre-drilled holes so that Grant can now drill into the Tijolo wall and see what we're dealing with because we need some sort of cement or something added in there to provide more strength when we're attaching our French cleat. Hmm. So far, it seems like a fairly solid wall, which is surprising. <laughs> yeah, well, it might be going into some of the mortars, right? Possibly, yeah. Blocks? It might not all be like that. Once yeah. I get the hammer drill, I'll be able to, like, because this... No, that doesn't have enough power. Once I get the hammer drill in, I'll be able to know, right? But I'm, I want to make pilots anyway, so... Yeah. So I can hammer drill it. So you can see Grant has chiseled out a larger hole for all of the drill holes, except for this one, because one is already into cement, so it has something to hold on to. You can see Grant packing the cement into the hole, starting off with the trowel and then also stuffing it in with his finger and packing more in with the trowel. So this is the first method that we tried. So that gives you a better idea of what we're dealing with. You can see all the way in to the next chamber of the tijolo there where he drilled through. And we're stuffing it full of cement. See if it works. You made a new tool. Oh, no. I am a tool. <laughs> did you fill that with cement? Certainly did. Nice. Ooh. 
work smarter, not harder. Uh oh. <laughs> Except if it breaks. It. it works. It just... does work. Get a drip in cement. It's okay, I'll clean it. Careful. Want me to get the door? Yeah, that'd be great. Thanks, bud. I didn't I didn't get screwed on properly. <laughs> but it worked. Draft is coming in. All right, so it's not too bad, but we had a few little splotches of cement. So I will clean those up before they dry. You're so loud. Doesn't bother her. Some lovely wood you have there. Thank you. It's gonna be a coffee station. So I'm cutting this to length so that it will fit across the end of our kitchen on top of the dishwasher. So here goes nothing. Mm -hmm. Woo. All right, and another cutting board. Yeah, <laughs> something, mm, something. Nice work pipes. So now I'm working on the shelves for our little coffee station on the side. Ooh. So each shelf is going to be three boards and then I'm going to build the framework with the thinner ones. So then on the sides our shelves will rest on the edge of those pieces. Fancy. Well, apparently everyone and their monkey's uncle is doing woodworking right now because it was almost impossible to find sanding discs. I ended up finding them at the Chinese, so I'm not sure what the quality will be. And I also found one of these style sanders, which I've never used before. So we're going to give it a try. Oh, and I apparently have an assistant. Hi, Betty. Is this where you sleep now? On my workbench? Hey? Is this why all my stuff ends up on the floor? Hey, little stinker? Hey, little stinker? Alright, let's see what this one does. It works pretty good and it seems to take a lot more off at once although that could be because it's a 60 grit and I had been using 80 previously but that means that it also leaves quite aggressive sanding marks so I don't think I'm going to use this one on the face of this piece. I'm going to go back to using the regular sanding attachment with 80 grit just because I feel like this is a little bit more flat to start with so it will be less work to clean it up if I don't add more scratches than necessary. Now that we've cleaned up our reclaimed lumber, we've squared up the edges and I have everything cut to the lengths that I need. I'm using this as in place of a square clamp because I don't have one. So I'm just using a corner square. So now we're going to pre-drill. And we're going to countersink. And 
and then we're going to attach the other leg. So there is one side finished. Hi. Hello. Is that your new ironing board? <laughs> ironing board? Yeah. It's, new ironing board? it's oh, a new shelf. That. It's new shelves. Do you like it? Yeah, looks good. Ooh, fancy. So, that's what I did today. They're not put together yet? No, they're no. just sitting on there. I'm actually thinking of having the slats just sit. Mm -hmm. in place so that you can take them out if you ever have to access the plumbing. Yeah, that works. Today we're continuing with our project to create a small shelf along the side of our kitchen and the first thing I need to do is correct the length of one set of legs. So I thought I had them correct last night but it wasn't that bright when I was finishing up. And I guess I couldn't see the level all that well. So it was not, it was not level. So we're going to now cut a half centimeter off of the bottom of one set of legs and see if that evens it up. And of course this would be a lot easier to do if I had just got my measurements correct in the first place, but we do have a clamp on the side of the table saw and that keeps everything in place nicely. So, here we go. So now, when I push down, it's level with the countertop. So this wood has a slight bow to it, but hopefully that will, you know, come out over time. We'll have to put something heavy on the counter. Now I need to figure out how to get this piece to fit. So the plan is to line up the cardboard and mark it and then double check to make sure it fits. So let's give it a go. So I'm gonna use this piece of wood to hold the cardboard in place. I'm lining the straight edge of the cardboard up against the wall. And now I'm gonna go underneath and mark it so it's a bit of a tight fit, but I'm able to get in here and mark along the edge of the wood. So that is what it looks like marked out on the cardboard. So we're going to cut that piece and then make sure it fits in the gap. So now let's see if it fits this way. And it does. So now I need to transfer this mark onto our piece of lumber. I made a cardboard template. I've marked my line and then I've covered it with masking tape or painter's tape, hopefully to prevent any splitting while I'm cutting. Let's see if it fits. Look at that concentration on that face. <laughs> and I had to pick crap out of your hair because you're a disaster. Oh, I'm a hot mess. Ready? Mm -hmm. Ready to see if it fits? See if we can get in there. Ooh. Like a glove. Be better if our wood was straight. <laughs> that's what she said. Hey. Literally, but that's hey, what that you looks, just said. It is what I just said. It looks pretty good though, eh? Yes. So now I just need another small piece for the back here. Like the piece Ooh, you just I cut off. I wonder if the piece I cut off would fit. And it fits. Yeah. Yay! I'm not very good at figuring out angles, so for the framework behind me, 
I figure the best way to get the right angles that I need is to just lay out the framework. So I have these all squared up and I have this piece flush against the wall. So I'm just going to mark my cut lines with a pencil and, and then cut it on the line. Okay, there goes nothing. So that is the framework for the countertop finished and installed. And you can really see how crooked the walls are. And this is also a very good example of how dyslexic I am. <laughs> Which side is this? That's the left side. <laughs> and Which side is this? That apparently is also the left side. <laughs> Uh, that would be the right side, oh. but at least I was consistently dyslexic. So I've marked all of my pieces left when they're right and right when they're left. Right when they're wrong. I actually didn't notice until I was assembling all of my pieces that I had everything backwards. Mm -hmm. So anyway, I got it all the correct lengths I got the correct angles and everything fits. Everything is level. I just was a little confused with my directions. And that is how far I got with the project this week. I would have finished with a little bit better planning, but I need at least two more of these pieces and the palette is sitting outside in the rain. So we have to wait for it to dry now. No, it's not in the rain anymore. I put it in the oak building. Oh, thank you. So it'll dry faster. High five. <laughs> if you have enjoyed our videos so far, please give us a like, share it with your friends, leave a comment down below. We love hearing from you and hopefully you at least found it entertaining. What do you have for me? I've got some garlic for you. The last of our garlic is finally done. These ones didn't witch broom, which is nice. They were planted a little later. Oh, okay, so they missed that little warm spell. Yeah, in December. Nice. Mm. They look good. Mm. Perfect timing because we're out of garlic. Oh, well, there's lots more in there. Oh, well, those are the little tiny ones, though, right? Oh, there's some larger ones, too. Okay. Well, we need more in the house. Well, can the garlic for you. Now, Ooh. Now we have garlic. Go make me something delicious. That one almost looks like one from the store. Mm-hmm. Good job. See what I got to deal with? He's wandering around in his towel outside. My hula skirt. Hula, hula, hula. Hula, hula, hula. <laughs> yeah, it looks like your figgy is ready. Yeah. Big and squishy. Oh, it feels ripe. Should we pick it and see? It's not very dark, but it feels ripe. All right, let's, uh, it doesn't come off easy though. All right, we'll leave Maybe it. leave it for a couple days. Yeah. So that is our first fig from our fig tree. We're gonna have a cup of tea and try our fig. One of the things that is hard to find in Portugal is beverages that are not sweetened with artificial sweeteners. So we're talking pop, juice, iced tea, pretty much all of the above are going to have artificial sweeteners. So today I'm going to make our own iced tea. So I'm using a black tea with fruit flavor, half a cup of sugar, so we're just going to use a funnel to put that 
into this glass jar, we're going to add in one cup of hot water. And we're just going to swirl that around to melt the sugar and make a simple syrup. So the sugar is now dissolved. So in this cup, I have three of the tea bags and we're just going to add one cup of boiling hot water. And we're gonna let those steep for 10 minutes. We're gonna add this to our simple syrup. Oops, and some of it went on the counter. And we're gonna to top this off with two more cups of water. So just cold water this time. And we're gonna put this in the fridge. Me do iced tea. Iced tea? How is it? It's all right. It's all right. Happy with that? What is it? Hibiscus? No, it's my uh, it's my fruit. Black tea with fruit with oh, berries. Nice. Because it's we delicious. can't get iced tea in the store that doesn't have As sweetener. Aspartame. Um, that's good. So I made some for you. That's what you made. That's my surprise. That's your I thought I was getting like banana bread or something. So you're not happy with something? Oh no, it's delicious. Bread? I mean, uh, thank you very much. Remember yesterday when I uh, said something about Christina's iced tea, that it was pretty good. It was all right. It was fantastic. And there's none left. Hey, Christina! What? How do you make your iced tea? <laughs> oh, so it was... All right enough that you want more? Yeah, it was okay. It was okay. You should make more. I'm busy painting. You should make more. You can make more. You That's why I wanted the recipe. Oh, okay. Um, boil the kettle. Boil the kettle? That sounds like work. I'm over it. What? So the lemonade is finished. The lemonade is 140 mils of sugar, one cup of lemon juice, and then um, one cup of hot water with your sugar, and then top it up with two more cups of cold water. Thanks for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed this week's video. Take care, and we'll see you next week. Okay, okay bye! bye.